let's go ahead and talk about the Viri proxy system, which is extremely powerful. Now, uh, the scene that I have here, we got this uh, kind of very intricate uh, sculpt here. You can see it's, uh, if I go to the information, you can see is the polygon count of this object is about 2,187,264. I mean, it's a huge file. And we know that Cinema 4D is terrible in handling heavy viewports. Now, imagine if I, uh, and the next thing about this scene, we are having this subsurface scattering material, which is a heavy material. We have GI scatter, and this is the exact same thing that we uh, worked on when we were uh, discussing very materials and the subsurface scattering material. This is the exact same thing. I'm just, uh, I've just changed some settings here. I made the uh, uh, scatter radius to be 25 and we ha have GI scatter turned on here uh, now uh, this is about 2 million and 187,000 polys imagine if we have uh, 4 of these guys or uh, 16 of these guys or 36 of these guys or 72 of these guys I mean imagine how heavy the scene would be imagine if I go to something like uh, 36 uh, copies of these guys and if I wanted to spread them throughout my scene it's gonna be about uh, 75 76 million polys uh, and imagine how heavy it's gonna get now how uh, how on earth we're gonna render something like that now uh, the answer is in uh, VRA proxy 2 system which is extremely powerful and it's extremely easy to use uh, so let's go ahead and get uh, started with this uh, this is the uh, Cinema 4D tag, as you can see, we got this uh, sculpt tag here. And see, I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this. And from the uh, tools, I'm gonna create a polygon copy from this. There we go. Now we have this copy. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually delete this uh, main version here. We don't need it. So there we go. Here is our polygon count. And if I go to the object information, as you can see, the polygon. Uh, is 2,187,000. So it's a really extremely heavy. If I go to the uh, my quick shading lines, you can see, <laughs> I mean, it's very, very detailed uh, sculpt here. So let's go ahead and uh, go through. You know, uh, it's really important that you follow uh, the steps that I uh, go through uh, just to make sure you're not going to crush your system or you're not going to make any problem with your. Uh, system. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and uh, because I'm sure this is going to look great, the material is great, the lighting is nice, so I really don't want it to be seen in my viewport and I really don't want to make any problem uh, you know with Cinema 4D, you know Cinema 4D is really bad with handling viewport and if I create a few copy of this it's going to uh, make uh, some really problems for me. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, uh, now, these are the steps that you really need to uh, follow in order to optimize your scene whenever you want to use the very proxy system and whenever you want to create some proxy scene. I don't know if you want to spread a thousand tree uh, in your scene. Uh, these are the steps that you want to do. The first thing I want to do is to right click on this and add a Cinema 4D tag, add a display tag. So let's go there. This is the display tag. Uh, I'm going to use, turn this uh, shading mode on. Uh, change this to line and change the style to box. So basically, uh, we're just seeing a bonding box instead of the object, but if you render it, we're gonna uh, render it perfectly uh, fine. So this is the first step that you're gonna need to take. Uh, the next thing, let's go ahead and create our cloner. So I'm gonna create a cloner. Uh, there we go. Now, in order to activate the very proxy system, uh, it's really simple. You create a cloner, you create an array, you create, I don't know, uh, whatever you have that support render instances, and you just check render instances. This is extremely important. If you not check this, uh, your system is going to crash, especially if you have, I don't know, 70, 80 million polys and you are rendering subsurface scattering, GI, just it's not going to handle it uh, very well. Now, this is very important. Let's go ahead and um, go through, I'm going to put this dragon under my cloner. I'm going to just uh, get out of a bit so we can see what we have here. There we go. Now we have three of this cloner, as you can see. Let's go ahead and um, see what we can do here. I'm going to go to my cloner. I'm going to change this to be grid array. There we go. We don't want 
in one. I'm gonna go ahead and render about 36 of these dragons and imagine 36. It's about 72 million and uh, we got 187,000 extra for anyone and it's gonna be about 75 million polys. So let's go ahead and increase this value to six, increase this guy to six there. I'm gonna go ahead and change the size to something like 2,500, 2,500, even if it's enough. Also, I've got this plane. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the ground. I just want the plane here. I'm gonna go ahead and make this very, very big and also get out here. So this is something kind of enough maybe and there we go so we got about a lot of these guys now we can actually go ahead and add whatever effector that we need let's go ahead and maybe create a random effector and I don't need any randomization on Y just some on X and Z and we are ready to render now imagine actually I rendered it one version without uh, uh, having a render instance turned on just to see what's gonna happen and uh, Cinema 40 crashed and I had to restart my computer so make sure to uh, turn this option on because we are rendering about 72 million polys we are rendering 36 object with subsurface scattering material applied to so GI lighting I mean it's gonna be really huge so that's very important let's go ahead and see how that's gonna happen let's go ahead maybe uh, from here Let's uh, render this thing and see what's gonna happen. Maybe we can make this plane just a bit bigger. So there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and render it and hopefully uh, we see the result. I can actually go ahead and render it in the viewport here. So let's go 845. Maybe we can go ahead. Uh, let's see and render it, see what's gonna happen here. Actually, I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. And uh, when, when the render is finished, I'm gonna get back to you and uh, walk you through the results so there we go guys the render is finished we have rendered 75 million polys in five minutes with subsurface scattering with gi i mean this is crazy really very very cool 75 million polys i mean if we were had to all of these guys in our viewport uh, it would definitely crush Cinema 4D and it would Im be impossible to go through. But, uh, you know, using the technique that I showed you, using this display tag, using the render instances, and basically by turning this on, you're uh, making the viewer proxy system, which is very, very uh, great. I'm going to go ahead and change my lighting, maybe make it a bit uh, lighter. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to maybe something like, um, let's go to something like 6 here. And I'm going to go ahead and change the view that I'm rendering from, okay, maybe to something like this. I'm going to go ahead and render it. And when it's finished, I'm going to be back and um, say the final things. So as you can see, the render is uh, finished. And um, the render time is 3 minutes and 52 seconds. And it's really powerful. I mean, 3 minutes and 52 seconds for 75 million polys. And I really... Uh, it's really nice it's really cool and great now another thing that uh, I want to just really briefly uh, mention it is that uh, we also have another uh, uh, legacy proxy system uh, Vira proxy file here if you have a very mesh file uh, you can go ahead and import it and you can use that as your proxy file but it is a legacy purpose uh, and you clearly need to use this uh, VR Proxy 2 system, which is very, very powerful and it's really easy to manage and it is extremely powerful as I uh, walked you through. Uh, so, see you in the next lesson.